everybody, Daryl here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. We are along Susumu Yamazaki's route. In the last episode, we didn't do much besides get some more common route material out of the way, mostly uh, scenes that Yamazaki shared with Saito. But hopefully this episode will actually have some Yamazaki action, which will probably actually just be his uh, scenes from Zoisoroku like it was with Sanin, but at least it'll be something, right? So let's dive right in. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. And here we have to choose to investigate. And investigate the Yagi house once again. This time scream to bring Okita out here. Here we have to choose once again to go back to headquarters. Stick with Yamazaki. And again, but... And once again, hang with Okita. And once again, but... No, I'll take care of it. Hooray, we finally get to be worried about Okita! And that's because Yamazaki has something to do with that whole thing, so... Let's go worry about Okita for once. Where could they be going, I wondered. I'm worried about Okita. What were Okita and Dr. Matsumoto doing? Was Okita going to talk to the doctor about his cough? He was coughing an awful lot lately, now that I thought about it. Was he alright? I decided to follow them. Huh? Unfortunately, I waited too long, and by the time I made my way outside, they were gone. I think they went this way. Oh, Yukimura, are you looking for someone? Shimada, have you seen Okita and the doctor? Hmm? Oh yeah, I think I saw them on their way to the courtyard. Thank you. Don't mention it. Just slow down before you hurt yourself, alright? Yes, goodbye. I saw him walk off, and it got me thinking. The courtyard. Should I try and catch up, or should I go around the back to reach the courtyard before they did? I should... go around. I ducked onto the narrow path that ran around the back, and I soon found myself at the courtyard. <sighs> I hid myself in the shadows, waiting. Oh, you naughty little eavesdropper. Okita and the doctor appeared only moments after I hid, silently. Not well enough, probably. To be honest with you, Okita, you have tuberculosis. For just a second, my heart stopped. A shiver ran down my spine, and suddenly I felt very, very cold. I had a feeling that was it. The real thing, huh? The famous disease. Okita has... Gotta tell you, though. I'm not used to getting health advice from doctors, you know. <laughs> the best medicine for tuberculosis is rest. I suggest you leave the Shinsengumi and eat nutritional foods to keep up your energy. Sorry, no can do. Look, this is serious. If you don't deal with this, you might be fine now, but eventually you won't even be able to get up from your bed. Well, then I'll be here until then. I put my sword before my body, even if I cough up blood. Why are you so desperate to stay here? Oh, I'm the Shinsengumi sword. Me being here is my everything. I'm here to kill anyone who stands against the Shinsengumi. Simple as that. Oh, I understand. Okita sounded cheery, but I was listening in a state of shock. Okita is going to die? <sighs> I felt like I wanted to faint, but I stayed strong and remained standing. Oh, look, Doc. Please don't tell Kondo and the guys about this, okay? Promise? Well, I suppose there are certain things that not everyone needs to know. There's something else I've been keeping secret. I just can't bring myself to tell her. There's a rumor that Kondo was working for a group of extremists, some of the imperialist Ronin. How could I tell her that? <laughs> the news of Okita's illness had me so scattered, I almost cried out at this new piece of intelligence. My father working with nationalists? <sighs> there was suddenly someone behind me. A hand slipped over my mouth before I could react, and a freezing sensation made my spine shiver. Stay silent. Mm -hmm. It was a calm, cool voice that I'd heard many times before, although never from quite so close. Ha <sighs> I'm kind of sad that I'm using so many of Saito's scenes and Yamazaki's route, but... 
Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to stay in Saito's route to consult Yamazaki's route for a lot of his scenes. Saito? <sighs> My body relaxed. The body behind me was Saito, not some anonymous assailant. Be still. Soji is very perceptive. I'd be surprised if he hasn't already realized. I nodded my head as much as I dared. His hand over my mouth made me too nervous to breathe. Saito's presence next to me was silent and sharp, like a blade in the night. It seemed like hours passed before Okita and Matsumoto finally left. Too close. If it weren't for Saito, you'd gotten in some real trouble. It's amazing he was able to rescue me. Yamazaki! How long was he... No, something told me that would be a foolish question. He was probably watching the whole time. Was he in this scene originally? I can't remember. Sorry. If you hadn't stopped me, Saito, I probably would have given myself away. No, it is I who should apologize for being so forward with you. Oh, you just did what you had to do. Oh. Nonetheless, he followed orders, which is commendable. Oh, no, not at all. There was the briefest hint of a smile in his eyes as he spoke, and then it disappeared. Now, Soji, can you truly pretend that you heard nothing, specifically nothing regarding his illness? He wasn't asking me to keep my mouth shut per se, but rather to forget what I'd seen and heard had ever happened. But why... If word of his illness were to get out, it would be detrimental to the Shinsengumi. Our enemies would be elated, and the chief and commander would be miserable. <sighs> he was right. Even I could understand that. But I couldn't forget the sight of Okita smiling. Even with the seriousness of this news. We will deal with his illness. This is nothing you need to concern yourself over. But... In other words, do not get involved. <sighs> At the end of the day, I was still only a guest. The sad reminder resurfaced once more. I may live among the Shinsengumi, but I wasn't one of them. Saito's words made that very clear. Suddenly I felt cold, as if a cold gust of wind blew through me, draining all the heat from my body. I was all alone. From then on, Matsumoto visited the compound regularly, to check- oh, I can skip. Why do I always forget to skip? September 1865 Some time after the headquarters was moved to the Nishihongwanji Temple, a visitor had arrived. His name was Dr. Ryojin Matsumoto, and he'd come to the Shinsengumi base under the pretense of performing physical exams on the warriors. During his visit, however, it came to light that Okita had contracted tuberculosis. September 1865 A few months after his fruitful visit, the last hot lingering breath of summer enveloped the town. Yeah, this is definitely Yamazaki's, uh, Zusoroku episode. It's so hot. Summers in Kyoto were much more humid than back in Edo. The stagnant air left you feeling sticky, and sweat pooled. Ugh, that sounds so unpleasant. I'm so glad I have air conditioning. Even so, all the captains were dutifully performing their appointed tasks. I think I saw Nagakura and Harada training in the practice room earlier. And Inoue just headed out to town on some errands. That meant the only one left in the headquarters reserved for the leaders was me. Well, I was considering what to do with my free time that afternoon. Huh? I sent someone passing through the hallway just outside my room. Perhaps Inoue had returned from his trip. I got up to slide my door open, intending to ask if he needed any help. I looked down the hallway. Oh, Yamazaki? I figured he'd go report something to Hijikata or something, but... Just as this thought came to mind, Yamazaki turned away from the direction the commander's room was located. Everyone should be out of the compounds. Did he not know that? I didn't know what his business in the wings was, but I felt I had to tell him that everyone was out at the moment, so I followed him. Well, at least I wasn't just being nosy. He stopped in front of a specific room, glancing around to verify there was no one in the area, and silently slid the door open. 
Wait, that's Okita's room. Seeing him, I suddenly remember what Yamazaki's official job was. In addition to scouring the city for information, he had to monitor the movements of the members of the Shinsengumi and report back to Hijikata. Actually, he has a lot of jobs in the Shinsengumi. M maybe I... I had a horrible feeling I wasn't supposed to have witnessed him going into Okita's room. I froze in place, uncertain as to if I should leave the area quickly. Uh, uh! I nearly shrieked when he popped out of the room in front of me, frowning. I'm always saying, Chizuru, you're a terrible ninja. Why are you following me? Were you trying to do something? Uh, I, um... Calm down. There's no need to be frightened. But, but, why aren't you surprised to see me? Because you're a terrible ninja. I mean, I wasn't making a sound, and you appeared out of nowhere. Hmm, I had a feeling it was you. The footsteps were hesitant. What? How could you... I sensed your presence approaching. I could feel no ill intent. And because you clearly had no real reason to follow me, your movements were full of hesitation. He had analyzed all of that just from hearing my footsteps. The watch was indeed incredibly skilled. I considered the best time of day to do this unnoticed. I concluded this was the most likely. Seems I miscalculated. And now you're an unexpected witness. W well um, I only saw you step inside this room. It was enough. Luckily, this way I can have you assist me as well. Now I am an accomplice. W what before I realized what he was doing, he grabbed my arm and pulled me inside. Um, are you sure this is alright? I don't know if I should be in here. This is a confidential matter, so you can't mention this to anyone. What? Maybe he was in the middle of some sort of background check on Okita as part of his responsibilities as a member of the Watch. If that was true, then I had definitely stuck my nose in where it didn't belong. Uh, I'm sorry. I promise I won't tell anyone. I told you there was no reason to be anxious. I'll explain so you weren't confused. Please listen closely. R right Dr. Matsumoto asked me to go through and clean this room. Clean? My body sagged with sudden and overwhelming relief. That was all he was doing? Yamazaki's serious expression did not change, however. Only a few of the leaders would understand why it must be done. You know about Okita's illness, right? Yes. It was true. I had overheard Okita and Matsumoto discussing his condition. Well, Yamazaki was there too, so he would know that you know. Tuberculosis. A disease that infected the lungs and had no cure. The most common form of treatment for those diagnosed was to move them to a place with clean air in an effort to alleviate their condition. But Okita was a vital irreplaceable member of the Shinsengumi, not to mention the fact that he also stubbornly refused to leave his fellow warriors. It made sense that Matsumoto would deem it important to keep his living space as hygienic as possible. We can't allow him to clean his own room, as the resulting dust would most likely aggravate his condition. Unfortunately, for some reason Okita is adamant that no one should clean it for him. Hence, why I'm here while he's out, so be sure not to mention this to anyone. Uh, uh, okay... I understand now, but... Would it truly be okay to do this when he clearly doesn't want it? It's for his own good. Er, I don't think it's not that he doesn't want someone to do the work for him, but more that he doesn't want other people to see the inside. Yamazaki's eyes widened, and he snapped his eyes at me. The words tumbled out of his mouth. N don't misunderstand. I simply want to air out the room. I never had any intent on sneaking a peek into his personal items. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I had never seen him so flustered. Regretting my words immediately, I did my best to backtrack. Oh, I wasn't doubting you, Yamazaki. It had never crossed my mind that you had other reasons to enter his room while he was out. <laughs> Yamazaki? He frowned, his expression troubled. Perhaps a change in subject was in order. I thought for a moment. So, so uh, I was wondering, why did Dr. Matsumoto ask you in particular? Uh. The air was heavy with an awkward silence, but finally... 
My family's business is needles and herbal remedies. It's different from what your father practices. It's East Asian. Uh, oh, really? He shrugged, his voice light and indifferent. Due to that and my background, the chief and the commander agreed with Matsumoto that I should be in charge of the Shinsugui medical care. The most I can do is simple first aid and hygiene care, but they've given me official orders to keep an eye on Okita. I appreciate you telling me all this, Yamazaki. Thank you. I now understood the reason he had hesitated. I bowed deeply to him in gratitude. Seeing as I wasn't a member of the Shinsengumi, he didn't have to take the time to tell me about himself, but he did, sharing a kind of kinship with me. He was gambling with the risk of getting in trouble if someone found out that I knew the details, and still he explained it all to me. I promise, I won't share anything you just told me. So, when you said I could help you earlier, you met with the cleaning? Then, it shouldn't be a problem. I'm good at things like that. I'll do my best to help out. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. His lips curled up in a smile when I clapped my hands together enthusiastically. My heart warmed, and suddenly I was even more eager to do something for him. We could do this. Yamazaki and I set about dusting and cleaning the room with quiet efficiency. Before too long, we'd managed to finish roughly half of what needed to be aired out. Huh? Lifting up Okita's pillow, I found a small bound book. Hogyoku Haiku Collection. <laughs> and I know what this is. That's... His face paled, and I heard him swallow loudly. S so this is why you don't want people in his room? That's the only reason he doesn't have any porno mags or anything? Yamazaki... Does that mean you know what this is? His gaze shot over to me, the lines in his face hard. Yes, Hogyoku is the name the commander writes under, so... That means... This is a compilation of Hijikata's haikus? Word among the men is that Commander Hijikata refuses to show anyone his collection. This being here means Okita must have taken it discreetly, without Hijikata's approval. Oh no! It looked like I uncovered something I wasn't supposed to find. What should we do? We should... Leave it be. In order to curry favor with Yamazaki, we must leave it be. By the way, reportedly, Hijikata's haikus are really very, very bad. <laughs> I feel like we should pretend we didn't see this. Yamazaki raised his eyebrows at me in surprise. I, I mean, this is Okita's problem, right? He had to have known what he was doing. So it's probably best that we don't interfere. Maybe it's possible that he intends to return it himself sometime soon. It was a matter between Okita and Hijikata. If either myself or Yamazaki, the uninvolved pair, interfered, it would appear as meddling. He'll know we were in his room if we take the book with us too. He wanted to make sure he didn't find out. It's a difficult decision, especially considering Hijikata's feelings regarding the collection. After a moment, he sighed deeply and shrugged. He flashed me a wry smile. You're right, Yukimura. Let's focus on our task. Okay. Lifting the pillow again, I carefully returned the book where I found it. We continued our cleaning spree and finished without much trouble. Okita kept his room tidy and kept good care of his belongings, so we didn't have to do a lot. Thanks for all your help today. If it's all right, would you be willing to continue assisting me like this from now on? I'd be happy to, if we get to be together. It seems he wished to make it an official request. My palms were sweaty, but I nodded. I can't do much, but if I can be useful in some way, I'd love to help. He looked into my eyes with a deadly expression. I expect that I'll be away from headquarters more often now, with both my watch duties and my studies under Matsumoto taking my time. If you notice anything at all, if something's off with Okita, could you check on him? That was easy enough. I'd be glad to do it. I opened my mouth to answer. And, if anything should happen to me, I want you to care for him in my place. What? It has to be you. You are aware of his condition, and you're the only one with a background in medicine. <sighs> he looked at me, and I could feel how important this was to him, but I had to shake my head. This job isn't something you can easily ask someone to take on, is it? 
If there comes a time when there's no one else, I suppose I would be the best option. But we have you, Yamazaki. I caught his eye, and I refused to look away. I tried to speak as firmly as I could. You are the one who is best fit for the position. <laughs> I don't want to hear you talk as if you won't return. Just make sure you will. I will definitely help you out as much as you need. He absorbed my words, and it took a few moments before the serious expression on his face brightened. I think I didn't have the motivation nor the emotional strength to take on this mission. I will do my utmost to fulfill it. He pulled what looked like a thick notebook from one of his pockets. What is that? I try to keep an eye on not just Okita, but all of our men who are sick or wounded, and their changing conditions. Dr. Matsumoto sends me instructions, and I keep track of all the treatments I should do in here. Did you come up with this yourself? Well, most of it's based off the data from Dr. Matsumoto's examinations. I just compiled it. He put no particular emphasis on the process, but I knew it was a lot of work to put a list like that together. It was clear that he cared a great deal about everyone in the Shinsengumi. He watched over them even when they didn't realize it. So refer to this as something occurs while I'm gone and perform the appropriate treatment. I'll let Chief and Commander know the plan. Okay, I can only do a little, but I'll do my best. Yamazaki's skills and abilities dwarfed my own, but I wanted to offer what aid I could in hopes that I would be able to help. He handed me his compiled notes, and I held them carefully. When he spoke, his voice was quiet. I wish to continue supporting all of the Shinsengumi from the shadows. It would make me happy if you would help me do so. Yes, of course. I saw a ghost of a smile appear on his face. That's very reassuring. Thank you. Truly. If I did my utmost to perform the tasks I can do to the best of my ability, that was all Yamazaki needed for me to be happy. The fact that I could help somehow, it felt good. And we get to skip some. For our next choice here, we have to say... The Furies. New text again for the history. April 1867. The cold that engulfed the city of Kyoto gradually dissipated as the sunlight peaked through the thick clouds. On this day, Yamazaki had taken me with him to buy some medicine, rather than for his usual rounds. Ah, oh, we actually get a new scene with Yamazaki. The Shinsengumi always stocked various medicines. Normally, Yamazaki had been in charge of procuring and managing all of the different kinds, but he invited me out to share some of his wisdom. According to him, Yamazaki was the one who'd proposed this idea to Kondo and Hijikata. It wasn't only because I was a doctor's daughter, but I guess my actual experience helping out with my father's clinic in Edo made them optimistic. As we were walking on our way home from the shops, Yamazaki had been instructing me on the types and doses of household medicines. Thank you for accompanying me to buy these supplies today. Not at all. I'm just happy to learn all of this. Thank you. That means a lot. The only person I know who is bright and qualified enough to study treatments and medicine is you. I wanted you to have this knowledge just in case. Yes, of course. Just in case. Anyway, we sure bought a lot today. Antifebrile ointments, medicine to reduce stomach pain, and more to help with digestion. Come to think of it now, wasn't there something else we were supposed to get? Meaning... You know, that medicine. Ishida medicinal powder? Everyone drinks it. That's Hijikata's family stuff. Oh, Ishida medicinal powder. That's mixed by the commander's family. He personally orders it. Oh, I didn't know. Both the commander and Saito believe in its efficacy. But I just can't bring myself to... I mean, I don't mean to say I don't believe in the commander's word. I'm only speaking from a pure medical standpoint, of course. Don't worry, I know. Uh, oh. Well, they do say that sickness comes from the heart. So if the heart believes in the medicine, then sometimes that's all it needs to work. Suddenly, Yamazaki halted in his tracks. Huh? What's the matter, Yamazaki? Oh... Er, uh... What are you blushing for? Is it because I mentioned heart? Did you forget to buy something? No, um, if you'd like, 
I was wondering if you wanted to get some Odongo at the cafe over there. Huh? You heard him. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to hit on you or skip out on work or something. Not even just a little bit? You see, when I received approval from the chief to take you shopping, he'd asked me. Since you're taking her out, why don't you take her to the Odongo shop? So, what do you say? Wait, was he trying to set us up on a date? Oh, well, if that's the case, sure. I'll take you up on your offer. It was quite rare to see Yamazaki propose such a thing. But I decided to go along with it. Let's have fun. Ah, oh, a new picture with him. Haven't seen this one. Spring's almost here. It seems like the cherry blossoms will bloom soon. You're right. Whenever the spring season approaches, I'm reminded of something. It was when you first got approved to go outside. Huh? You remembered something like that? Well, yes. I have my reasons. I wonder what you could mean by that. I stood there thinking of what he could have been referencing before he quietly spoke again. I was watching you from the back as you went on your rounds with the other captains. R really Well, I am the watch. It is my job. It was, of course, to check whether you'd try to run away, and to watch what the captains would do if you ran away as precaution. Ah, uh, yes, thinking back on it now, wondering what the captains would do if you ran. Would they actually go to the lengths of killing you, since we told you the secrets of the Shinsengumi? Such were the concerns. Back then, they were testing you, testing to see whether you'd escape or not, but you didn't. Every time you didn't, I felt relieved. And now, I finally understand something. Even during that time, not a single captain ever thought you'd make a run for it. You had earned their trust ever since then. But Okita always said he'd kill me. How many times do I have to tell you that's how he shows his affection? That's Okita speak for, hey, how's it going? Or even, I love you. It can mean either one. That's his favorite phrase. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess you're right. In response to Yamazaki sharing that with me, I... Didn't even notice, what? Oh, say that I didn't notice that he was following me, I guess that means. Because just seeing that by itself almost makes it sound like I'm, I'm going to ignore everything he just said or something. I had absolutely no idea that you were watching me from behind. Well, that's because that's part of his job, not to be seen. Well, it wouldn't be great if you did. My job is to watch, after all. He gave her a proud smile. Alright, let's head back home now. Yamazaki stood up and looked at me. Oh, before we do, there's something I want to tell you as the watch. What is it? You're no longer a person we're watching. The chief, commander, and all the captains trust you. And as proof, they're entrusting you with managing the compound's medicine box. So I think you could have confidence in yourself. Okay. Now, let's head back. Yamazaki started walking, and I ran after his back. Beyond the streets, I could sense the warmth of spring approaching. Chapter 4 April 1867 Time to skip. And we've reached the point where Ito is leaving us. This time we have to choose. I am especially worried about the guard. What worried me most were the people leaving with Ito, Heisuke, and Saito. Would I ever get to see them again? Was this goodbye? I wanted to know what they were thinking. Were they still around? As I stood out to go look for them, I spotted Yamazaki walking toward me. Yukimura. Oh, Yamazaki. I heard you were injured. Are you feeling better? Um, yes, I'm fine. Have you, uh, seen Heisuke and Saito? Toto and Saito. His expression turned grim at the mention of their names. It was quite clear how he felt about the men who'd chosen to leave the Shinsengumi with Ito. Sorry for asking. I turned quickly to leave, but he held out a hand to stop me. I saw them going off that way. 
Thanks. If you want to speak with them, do it soon. Once they've left, you won't be able to talk to them. Yes. There they were. Heisuke, Saito. They turned around with reserved expressions. Alright, actually I'm going to go ahead and stop this here because I know this is a bit of a conversation that we're going to have with them. And I'll save that for the beginning of the next video. Well, we did finally get some exclusive uh, material with Yamazaki. One scene that was from Zusoroku, but one scene that was completely new. Which was really nice. Oh, I really wish we actually got to see some of the eating the Odango with them though. Because I mean, it was nice that we had the chat and all and he encouraged us. And let us know that we were trusted now, but... I would like the cute little Odango eating scene. Ah well, at least we bonded. So I hope to see you for more of that in the next video, or I'd love to see you in some of my others. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye bye everybody.